Okay guys, just a quick demo of what Extracts CAD looks like. Uh, when you open it up, this is the screen. It looks fairly comprehensive, mainly because it's basically a CAD package. If you've ever used a, a drawing package before, it's, it's helpful to have that sort of bit of background knowledge. If not, and you're persistent and computers don't scare you this is an excellent piece of hardware software to to use to help uh, design your, your track layouts basically you've got all of your tools for zooming in and out uh, easement is for when you're using flexi track to create curves with this is grid on and off snap to grid and so on this is for connecting your tracks curving tracks from endpoints and so on. So this is basically all of your uh, track uh, creation here. Um, we've got uh, opportunities to put structures on. Uh, you can select them from a, a, a list of uh, database that's already within Extract CAD or you can create your own. And that's one of the biggest things with Extract CAD. There are a lot of inbuilt uh, parameters to choose from or symbols to choose from that you can just click together like as if you actually had the gear in hand um, or you can actually design your own then we start getting to a, a few more um, object manipulation uh, type of uh, actions here uh, a few more actions on each piece of track that you've selected itself then you can actually change elevation so you can accommodate for changes in height of the of the actual um, layout itself you get a, a profile you get to see what your actual profile looks like over a, a specific um, area or length of, of run so you, you know whether or not you've got some sort of swiss out thing that you should be using a rack and pinion motor for rather than your, your big uh, 462 the Pacific steam engine uh, these are just general drawing tools um, this is handy I found for creating uh, baseboards uh, baseboard layers on the top of um, your uh, your plan so you know how to design and cut up your sections of wood <coughs> text measuring so if you that's just basically your tape measure there this one is the interesting one right here run trains this lets you it's almost like using DCC uh, you can create uh, trains from a list of rolling stock if your particular piece of rolling stock isn't in there you can actually create a symbol that represents the length in uh, over the couplers and the actual length of the wagon itself and this will allow you to drop trains that you create out of your rolling stock onto your track to just make sure that you've got enough length in between the in that passing loop that you're building for example uh, one of the features of, of uh, CAD programs is, is, is the ability to create layers and that's what this last section is here the layers you can uh, give them any sort of a title that you like which may relate to as I said earlier baseboards <coughs> Um, the actual area that you're planning your layout in and initially the, uh, the, the the sheet that you get which is this main sheet here this is effectively the area of the the room the man cave whatever it is the shed the the attic that uh, you're going to be putting your layout in and then these buttons here these are just quick select buttons to show or hide uh, additional layers. So that's just a bit of a quick tour through the toolbar. Um, I'm not gonna go through every single thing and I didn't want this to be an extensive tutorial, just a quick overview of what you can do. <coughs> so uh, all your classic file uh, information here, print, etc., etc. Ah, One of the things I will say is that when you've as you create uh, your layout and you're adding bits and pieces particularly if you're using um, models uh, buildings uh, rolling stock track that's uh, preset 
um, that's either in the list or in a list that you create yourself. By the end of it, you can build yourself a bill of material. So if you're actually using uh, material that you've got or stuff that you're planning to buy, it's not only good to give you an idea of your inventory, what it is that you need to buy, it's also a good uh, record uh, for insurance purposes because it, you, you never plan for the worst thing to happen but when it does, at least if you've created your, your inventory in something like Extract CAD, you've got it all there. Okay, um, now we'll go and have a look at parameter files. Now parameter files is where you add the databases for the specific uh, pieces of gear that you want to use. You go to browse, you go to parameters, and these are a combination of various vendors uh, track, whether it be uh, HO, double O scale, as we scroll down, we've got the American Batman, we've got N, EM fine scale for UK, Fallow, fast track, so there's a, there's a lot more um, parameter files in this version than I remember seeing because it's been about four or five years since I last used Extract CAD. Daypol, Hornby, oh old shoe have geez I haven't seen that for, uh, for years. Hornby Double O, Hornby Double O, Double O as opposed to Double O, even slot car stuff. That, that's a there's a lot of UK stuff. There's a lot more stuff in here than I remember there being previously. So pretty pretty much you can, any any layout you want to design with any gear that's going to go on a baseboard, you're looking, you're looking in here. Look, there's a whole bunch of N-scale stuff coming up now. Pico will be along shortly. NMRA, Pico, there we go. Pico HO, HOM for all you uh, narrow gauge people. And N, set track, N code 80, N code 55. So it's all there. Similarly, if you want to just load up an existing demo file, let's go open. Yeah, your XTCs are the, uh, the data files. These here are the ones that I created for, for my dad's layout, which I didn't really want to show, I wanted to just show a generic uh, layout that comes with it, so just bear with me a sec while I find my way back. Jeez, he's got a lot of crap on here. There we go. And demos. Okay, examples. <laughs> there you go. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, let's see if there's something which is more UK generic. I don't see one. Marklin. Two circles, two loops. Oh, let's go with N track. So it. All right. So what this, that, what that is, is an N track module. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with N track, but it's a, it's a two by four module, three tracks along the front. And the whole idea of this is it's basically like a big Lego block for, um, for model railways, where you can build your own little module and then get together with your mates in a sort of a club meet or whatever and stack them end on end and just have this huge layout whenever you get together. But that's not what I'm after. I just want something a little bit more generic. Yeah, I didn't want anything that was quite that big, but <laughs> there we go. Now there is... Uh, a map function on this which allows you to easily navigate because you'll notice that there's nothing along the sides here like scroll bars or anything like that so you can hit view and go view in and out 
And let's see if I can find the map view. Like I said, you have to, you're gonna have to bear with me while I. Uh, there we go, window map, and there it is right there. So you can see now this sort of brown shaded area here to the right. This is showing us what is currently on that map view. Oh, that's right. There's no scroll bars. As long as you've got a scroll wheel on your mouse, it's just simply click on the on the layout design, mouse wheel up, zooms in, mouse wheel back, zooms out. And as we scroll out, we'll see that we're starting to cover more and more of the layout. So it's quite a massive layout there. Now, one of the things that's, that I noticed down this section here, and I, see how we zoomed in? If I go over to the map mode and grab that little brown box now and drag it down over the area where I saw these here, this 1031, 1033, etc., that's actually rolling stock. So if we click on it, we get the details for that, that bit of rolling stock. Let's go at this end, 1038, it's a custom coach, cool. All right, so this is some rolling stock that somebody's already placed on the track. Now, if I click on run trains, somewhere about the place we've got this Canadian Pacific loco, but I have no idea. Don't, oh, there we go, click on the find button, Steve. There we go. Right there, underneath the map, there we have the engine. So if I now grab hold of this controller, this is oh while I while I'm thinking about it, this bar at the top, you notice the menu's changed. This shows all of the rolling stock that is associated with this layout. And I'm not too sure. There we go. So you can actually just keep dragging. You can have one example of each one of your types of rolling stock you've got and just keep dragging it to the layout and build your, your layout up that way. Now we'll get back to the train control. If I go give this a little bit of a nudge, you'll see it's running and it's heading back. If we click follow, that means we can stay at this level of detail on the map. Let's hit stop. Now there is, I'm pretty sure you can turn off those uh, labels as well if they're getting in the way. But as I said, it's been a while since I've used this program so you'll have to just bear with me. And what I might do is just turn auto reverse on so in case I run off the end of the track there. Stop. Oh, I've got to a, a spot where it doesn't actually like it, have I? Right, so the, see the points aren't set here. Now, I can't remember if changing direction does it or what. Right, no. There is some way to flip the switches there, and I'm very sorry guys, but I cannot remember how to do it. But anyway, that's a, a quick demo of how um, or what you what the potential of extract cat is and get rid of a few things and there I shall leave you with that. Hope you found it somewhat informative.